Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Sislowazzi. I'm an excellent Palbea enthusiast with decades of business experience. Last week, I created a video about how to create panel report in Power BI, leveraging various interactive visualizations such as tables, bar charts for benchmarking, line charts for trend analysis, and waterfall charts for variance analysis. But I didn't specifically address how to bring data into Power BI if you have the data currently sitting outside Power BI, for example in Excel. In this video, I will show you three things. Firstly, how to transform your data into a Power BI friendly format. Secondly, how to load the data from Excel to Power BI. And thirdly, how to create a star schema data model in Power BI. What is a Power BI friendly format? It is a way of structuring the information that will make it easy to make charts and tables without complicated text two things to be included in our checklist. Yeah? Firstly, check that your dimension table has a primary key column with unique values, i.e. only appearing once, no duplicate. This is our date dimension table. The date column is our primary key. It should be unique, no duplicates. And every other columns are the attributes of the dates. This is our cost center table. The cost center number column is the primary key. It should be unique. Every other columns are the attributes of the cost center number, so it's okay for them to have duplicates. In the GL dimension table, we have the GL number, the primary key, and it should be unique. And the rest of the columns are attributes of the GL, so it's okay to have duplicates. And secondly, check that your fact table has one foreign key column for each dimension table and one column for values or the facts that we want to measure. For example, if we have three dimension table, cost center, GL, and date, we need to have three foreign key columns. For our fact table, something that is Power BI friendly should look like this. Three columns of foreign keys when we have three dimension tables. So date, GL number, and cost center number. If we have four or five dimension table, then we need to have more columns. And then one column for the fact table. But sometimes our data doesn't come in a perfect format. It may look like this, whereby the cost center number appear as column header instead of a column on its own. So in this situation, we will need to transform this table into something that is Power BI friendly. How to transform this table into something that looks like this quickly and easily. Step one, press Ctrl T to format this table into table format. Once you have done that, hit table design and you should be able to see the table name in here. And if you want to, you can reformat or rename the table. Once you have done that, then hit data and click from table or range and then what you can do is highlight the first two columns, right click, and select unpivot other columns. And voila, cost center number is now appearing as rows. So let's rename this column, call it cost center number, press enter. And then the table name, let's call it PNL Optimize. Hit enter, and then save and load. And watch, PNL Optimize tab now appear. Yeah, looking good. I'm just going to format that a little bit nicer. What if we have one more month of data becoming available? All we need to do is go to the end of the table, paste the data there, and then go to PNL Optimize and right click, hit refresh, and voila, watch the June information being appended. Very easy, isn't it? After you're done, save your file and then go to Power BI and import the data from Excel. Click that. Select your file. And then the navigator window will open and select the tables or the sheets from the previous file that we have just created. Now you will see there are options to select tables with this icon with the blue line on top or to select the actual sheets and link it to Power BI. 
It is better to link them to tables rather than sheets. And the reason is so that just in case somebody is typing something on the right of the table, you don't want them to become dirty data that ruins your Power BI models. So my recommendation is to select the tables. So let's select the three dimension tables, GL, date, and cost center. And then let's select the optimized PNL, which is our fact table. And then after that, hit load. Wait for a second. It's loading. And watch this. The four tables now appear on the right. If you want to, you can rename them. There is no need to call them table GL. You can just double click it and call it GL. You can call that PNL Actuals. And then I'm going to call that Cost Center. And then I'm going to double click and call that Date. Now let's build our relationship. When you click the models over here, Power BI automatically create the relationship, but sometimes it doesn't do it properly. For example, in here, the date is not yet linked, so you may need to do it yourself. And how do you do it yourself? It's pretty simple. Just click and drag the date to date in here, and now it's perfect. Now, with regards to arrangement, my recommendation is to put your fact table at the bottom of the page and put your dimension tables on top so that it's easy to visualize how many dimensions you have and how many fact table you have. At the moment, our model is simple, so yeah, it looks quite neat. But later on, your model may become more complex as you build on and build more stuff. Congratulations, you have now reached the end of this tutorial. You have learned how to transform and pivot and optimize your data into a Power BI friendly format. You have also learned how to load the data from Excel to Power BI. And last but not least, you have also learned how to create a star schema data model in Power BI. Remember, when a data model is well structured, it will be so much easier to build various visualization in Power BI. And therefore, it is important to invest the time to set it up properly. If you want to learn more about how to build more interactive visualization to further elevate the look and feel of your PNL report, please watch my video from last week where I will show you how to build various visualization step by step. For now, keep on practicing and see you next time.